back, everyone. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is something we hear a lot about these days. There are all kinds of ways to treat it, even without the use of drugs. And here to tell us how is family expert Jane Fennelman. And hi, Jane. Thanks for being with us. It's so great to be back again, Jane. And good to see you. And first of all, we want to remind our viewers that if you have a question about ADHD or ADD, you can call now and get your questions answered by Jane. Just call 602-258-1212. And let's first start off by um, asking, what causes this? Man, that is the $64,000 question because when you find the cause, you've actually found the cure. And my personal take on it is lack of presence and inspiration. Presence meaning sitting down, eyeball, to eyeball. At the top of your show, when they had that little piece about the, uh, they did a study and they found out that kids just right. need some, a little bit of nurturance. Yeah. That seems kind of common sense, though, doesn't of it? Of course they need that. They need yeah. their parents. Yeah. They need that one. Yeah. yeah. And inspiration is, why should they want to clean their room? Why, why would they want to do their homework? Why would they want to go to school? School is like having a job that someone else chose for you that you're not going to get paid for that you're going to have to do for 12 years. So they would have to feel inspired to do that. You can punish them and try to force them to do those things, but I'm all about inspiration and reward and not so much about punishment and con control. Punishing will get you a payback, and control will get you a power struggle. So there's so many other easy ways, and ADD and ADHD is so easy to cure. It really is kind of a sin to medicate for it because the Concerta and the Stratera and the Ritalin, they, they really are a class two drug, just like cocaine. Oh, so you're, yeah, and, and, and what are some of the treatments? It's, you're saying counseling, and are there certain dietary things? Too Absolutely. That can kinda... If you cut out caffeine, sugar, um, and you give a high-protein uh, diet to a child, that's going to be helpful, of course, cleaning up their diet. Um, so absolutely, this is one of the cures. And I always say, people call me all the time and they say, well, how do you cure it? And I say, well, first of all, I don't cure it. You'll cure it. The parents will cure it. I hit the microphone. That's okay. You're fine. No, you're fine. <laughs> that habit. And um, the, the parent cures it. And the cure is different for each family because the cause is different for each family. So it, there's not a one-size-fits-all cure. But it, about 99% of the time, we get it all cleared up within three to five counseling sessions. Oh, uh, no drugs. And, and sometimes, is it, because in the old days, we didn't see as much of this, and now it's become more of a common thing. Uh, I mean, it seems to be so out there. Yes. Um, what, um, is a certain amount of this, too, a discipline issue? I think, uh, no, because, well, well, I think people are spanking and hitting and yelling as much as they ever did. I don't think that's changed. What I think has changed is, post-women's liberation, before women's lib, we had p moms at home with the children. The children got lots of attention. And moms want to work, and they want to be able to have a career. And that's fair, and that's right. But now that since women's liberation, women not only want to work, but they have to work now because of the way it shifted our economy. Now, a lot of families, if both parents don't work, there's just not enough income to support the family. So everybody's running around like a chicken with their head cut off. And so that's what we're modeling for the children. We're on the hamster wheel. So when we're running around like maniacs, why should we be able to expect our children to sit down calmly in a classroom and look at a teacher who's not singing songs or has lightning bolts shooting out of her head right, or exactly. changing colors? So they're just doing what a lot of us parents yeah, are doing, doing running running around. I love that with the chickens with their head cut off. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to continue this. We're going to be back to take some of your phone calls. Stay with us. This is the place. And welcome back. We are talking about ADHD with family expert Jane Fendelman, and we're also talking, taking some calls right now. And our first caller is on the phone. Her name is Winona from Mesa. And Winona, uh, what is your question, hon? Um, hi. Um, I have a little nephew, and he's about, he's going to be five. And we've noticed that during the evening time, he gets really, really hyper, and like right before he's going to go to bed, and then. He even has a real short temper, and he sometimes he kicks, hits, and everything. And he's been like that since he was real small. And we were just wondering if we should have him looked at or have him what tested? You mean? Did you, that what yeah. You said? Okay. Okay. So you said so he gets a little hype around bedtime. Yeah. Very. Okay. <laughs> Having a bedtime ritual is really important, and don't do little short books. Do a long book, and you do a few pages each night or a chapter each night so that they can't wait 
to get their teeth brushed and you get their PJs on and run to bed to find out what happens next to James and the Giant Peach or Harry Potter or Charlotte Webb or whoever. Okay, so a bedtime ritual is very important, and if you need to bless the room with a magic wand and, you know, abracadabra under the bed to protect from monsters or things like that, or if they need to arrange their stuffed animals so that they're protected through the night, that's good. Now, he may just get a little surge of energy. That might be his, you know, some people are morning people and some people are nighttime people, but if he needs to run around just a tad bit, then maybe that's a good thing. Now, you said he has a temper and sometimes he kicks, right? Yeah, she has mentioned that. Okay, yeah. now... That's the danger in ever yelling at or hitting your children because what you're doing is you're, you're teaching violence as a problem-solving technique. Now, sometimes kids kick even if they yeah. never had a verbal or physical, you know, violent experience yeah. with their parent. And I know you say, I, I'm not violent with my child, I just spank them. Well, if I hit you, Janine, if I don't like uh -huh. something that you said or did and I hit you, that's violence. So sometimes it starts there. So you have to be very careful about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Be very careful about choosing our words. And, and uh, if he kicks, you can sit down and ask him to th think about, tell me, how does that feel? How does it or, feel when someone kicks you? Or when they, when they, like when they throw total tantrums, I know if you remove them, you know, let them do that, but not giving them the attention, not buying into that attention when they're like yeah. two-year-old tantrums. You yeah, know? that's one choice. But also, there's a chapter in my book called um, Grocery uh -huh. Store Tantrums. Uh -huh. And there was a boy having a tantrum in the grocery store, and I just laid down next to him on the floor, and I just kind of, uh-huh, oh. yeah, yeah. You seem upset. So sometimes they just need feelings validated, because you, you were mad uh -huh. and telling your husband, and your husband said, Janine, you're having a tantrum. Yeah. I'll be back when that's done with. You would just, that would be like gasoline on the fire. You would be like, get back here, I'm talking to you. Or maybe I'd talk more quietly. <laughs> okay. Maybe. All right, Jeannie is on the line right now, and Jeannie um, has a question about getting support from your schools, right? Jeannie, go ahead. Hi, I have a 16-year-old. Um, she was tested and found to be ADD and ADHD. Um, we did the medication when she was a little bit younger, but I was against it, so we got off. Good for you. Problem is, we got diagnosed when she was in fifth grade, yeah. and to me, that was too late because she always struggled in school. Now we've been trying to play catch-up for the past five years. She's a freshman now, actually redoing her freshman year because her grades are so bad. We've gone to smaller schools. We've gone to a school that specialized in it. Mm -hmm. But I can never seem to get the teachers who promised to help out to actually implement a plan. We've done the 504s and all of that. Uh -huh. She constantly struggles. She's What's your daughter's strength? What's her favorite class? Uh, music and drama, arts. Music and drama? Yes. Okay, that tells us she's right brain dominant. Yes. Unfortunately, school is largely left brain dominant. It, it, our culture is left brain dominant. Very masculine, heavy, very logical. So this is a creative person, a free spirit, a, uh, the school is going to be kind of like a, a square peg in a round hole for her. Mm -hmm. If you can do things that, you know, if you get a really smart teacher, they'll use their strengths. Like Janine was talking about her boy's teachers, let her boy help out. And think about Jim Carrey, who would have been diagnosed and medicated for ADD, ADHD mm -hmm. if, if uh, he, you know, if he had been tested back then. And he never would be the multi-billionaire that he was, that he is today. But what his teacher did was, she said, if you can make it through this lesson, at the end of the lesson, I'm going to let you have the last five minutes to stand up and entertain. Yeah. Now, if the teacher is smart, they will find a way to use the strengths. One of the greatest things I learned when I got my teaching degree, my first, my undergraduate degree is a, a Bachelor of Science in Education, uh -huh. and I went to SMSU, uh -huh. the teacher's college, which is supposed to be the best. And... My favorite teacher at that school said, it is your job as a teacher to find out how each child learns best. Yeah, and every child is different. Some we have audio, one more question we're going to take. Visual. We have Jean from Glendale. Jean, go ahead with your question. Hello. Hi. Um, my question is about my husband. He's ADD, not ADHD. But I was listening to you, and you were talking about um, diets and stuff like that. Would that work for my husband? It would work for your husband, but your husband has to be inspired. For, is he having trouble focusing on his job or focusing on you? He has problems focusing a lot, but he does real good with his job. He does great at his job. Yeah. But he has difficulty connecting with you? Not connecting with me, but remembering things and stuff because he gets his attention switched to something else. Okay, if he forgets things, who takes up the slack? Do you take up the slack for him? I try. Okay, that makes his problem worse. When, we're, when we have somebody around us who we know will pick up the slack how, for how us, do you, how do you see? we're less likely to pay attention. Like I have a child right now, she's 12, 
and her parents want her to do her homework. She won't do her homework. She won't do her schoolwork. And they said, what can we do to make her want to do it? And I talked to the 12-year-old, and she said, they care about it so much that I don't have to care about it. So a lot of times, so it could be that for your husband, he knows that you'll take up the slack, so he knows he can forget things. Okay. Can you allow him, oh. with, with adults and children, allow him to suffer the natural yeah. and logical consequences of their choices? There you go. So then they have to pick up their own slack, huh? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And you have so a welcome. book and a CD, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's coming out with um, some new and improved things, too. How can people get a hold of that? They can get on my website, janespendelman.com. Uh -huh. Right. They can order my book there or my CDs there. They can go to Amazon.com. Okay. They can go to Phoenix Borders. They can go to Tempe Changing Hands Bookstore. Okay, great. And you can also call 602-532-0335. Jane, thank you so much for being with us. Thank we you so much, it. my Good dear. To see you it again. was wonderful to be okay. here. Okay, yeah. all right, great.